is Tammy with Real Southern Woman. It has been forever since I have seen y'all. It seems like. I don't know if y'all were as tired as me after the holidays, but my goodness was I tired. And so I did take a few days and chilled out. And of course, we had to put up Christmas decorations and do stuff like that. Chris went down to uh, St. Mary's, but he came home today. The girls both went back to school today. So I'm finally back on a normal schedule. The only difference is, excuse me, um, Amy goes to class. Um, she goes to class in the mornings. She does not have to be at school until 10 and then she gets home by noon, y'all. So, um, I don't get much of a break, you know, between the kids. Because Amy's always got friends here, no matter what time of day it is. Let me grab my coffee I made. I hope everybody got what they wanted for Christmas. I just made me a coffee. Oh my gosh, is it delicious. Put sweet cream in it, a little bit of evaporated milk, some nutmeg, and stirred it up. And then I put on my, uh, the actual spray kind of uh, cream. What do you call it? Here I am, I can't even think. It's Calbut. Calbut's come out with one now. So instead of Ready Whip, Calbut has one. You know, the ones that make the good butter. They're so good. I'm going to chit-chat a little bit with y'all tonight. Um, I do, I will say that on, on the 1st of January, I haven't seen y'all in quite a while, but I have thought about you, but I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, I was a little bit nervous about our books because with, uh, Colorado Valley Cooks, things started to grow like crazy after August this year. Well, um, I don't really have any kind of an accounting or bookkeeping system for it. And so I got really nervous about it and decided that I needed to do some research in the different programs. And I know when I work for Daddy, I always use QuickBooks, but I brought in QuickBooks. I brought, I brought in about four different programs over the last few days while Chris was gone because it was time that I could actually think. Y'all, I was in such a terrible mood. Y'all would not have wanted to see me because it was so confusing and I just, I was having such a hard time. And so then I downloaded what's called GoDaddy Bookkeeping. GoDaddy is the first platform that I used for our um, website. And so I thought, well, why not try it? So when I downloaded GoDaddy and brought in my information, it was unbelievably tip-top wonderful. So I did that late yesterday. Finally got a program that I thought that I could handle and buy. So I brought that in this morning and I'm just now in a good enough mood to come back on and say hey to y'all. <laughs> That's for real. I'm not kidding. Y'all wouldn't have wanted to be around me. I was so ill. I thought, how in the world am I going to have to, because the way those other programs worked, even if I brought the information in, it wouldn't code things right. It wouldn't do things. And I was going to have to go through all that and do all that by myself. And I was all nervous, and so I wanted to start it out at least for the new year. But this program was so good, y'all. When I brought it in, it coded everything for me, and I've got 2019 in there now. Not just the new 2020. So I'm happy, very happy tonight. Chris is home. I went to the grocery store for the first time since before Christmas. I went to Sam's Club tonight. Um, so Chris had to bring in all the groceries. I've got lots of food to make for y'all. I've just got to bite the bullet and do it. 
Uh, with that said, I have been reading my Bible because if I hadn't been reading my Bible, I would have been nuts. Uh, so I, but I've been coming to bed at night because Chris hadn't been here, and I, I don't ever watch TV, y'all, unless I'm with Chris. So um, I would just read my Bible at night, or I would listen to my autom audible Bible. And um, so I've been listening to that, and I've enjoyed that. I enjoyed the time alone, the, what little time I got, really, because the teenagers were always here. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of things I got for Christmas, so you will know. This coffee is so good. I bought Sam's Club Organic Dark Roast brand, and it's good. All right. It's too good for me to sit it down and let it get cold because it's got that good evaporated milk in it. Yummy. So anyway, this is a Renaissance palette. Amy got me a Renaissance Anastasia, I believe is how you say it, eyeshadow palette. Let me show it to y'all. And yes, it's backwards because y'all are in selfie mode, but I love it already. Um, she got me this, and she got me an eyebrow uh, thing to do my eyebrows, the color on them, because she always gets on to me because I would use mascara, and so she bought me an eyebrow thing that's the same brand as this, so she spent a little money on her mama. Then May got me, I have to remember Y'all, what did Bay get me? I hope she don't watch this. She won't. Um, Lord, I'll have to think. What? I, oh, May got me a fancy pillow. It's called a Casper pillow. I'm sure some of y'all have heard about it. She got it at Walmart. It came in a round circular uh, cylinder type thing with a lid on it. Casper. And so, I have a new fluffy pillow to sleep on. Um, I've always made a habit since me and Chris got married. And I know it would drive some people crazy. But pillows to me are dirty after a while. And so, I always at the first of the year would buy pillows. Okay? So, May got me my pillow. Um, what else? Chris, of course, didn't get me anything. Because... That's just how Chris is. But he knows how I am, and I could care less, for real. I'm going to take these off because they're glaring. I won't be able to see, but I'm just drinking coffee and talking, and then I'll check your notes in a minute. Anyway, um, I, I always buy what I want for Christmas and just put it under the tree. And sometimes he'll go out and get me a couple of surprises, but this year he didn't. But, y'all, we've been so busy, it's been hard to. He didn't really have many surprises either. Everything he got, he had seen too, pretty much. Except for what the kids got him. They got him a pair of Crocs, and Amy got him a pair of overalls. And, um, let's see. Let's see. Y'all got anything important to tell me? I know it's been a while since I've been on, and I'm sorry. But, like I said, I hadn't been in the best of moods. And, I just needed a break, you know. Not that I don't like y'all or anything. I just needed a break from everybody and everything. And, uh, so I got one. So now I'm all refreshed. And now I have my program working. And now I'm happy. And so, y'all would much rather see me happy than uh, aggravated. Now, with that said, let me get up here on the bed. I can't hardly fit. Let me see if y'all can see me if I do. I'm hanging half on the bed and half off the bed. My, my bed spread is in the dryer. I had to wash it yesterday. Um, I put up all my Christmas stuff and packed it up to take it down to St. Mary's. I've done a lot since y'all seen me. Um, I have been working. I haven't been lazy. I want y'all to see these crazy shoes I ordered. This is what I got myself for Christmas. Y'all know I only wear New Balance 990s. They are made in the United States, and you can custom make them. 
Y'all are going to crack up when you see my shoes. So, I went in there in November and decided that I was going to make me a pair of shoes with this new material. It was a, um, just for a limited time, okay? Um, and it's shiny and bright. And I thought, well, those would be nice for Christmas. Well, they didn't even get them to me until like three days ago. Look at these. You can actually go on there. They're $200, but y'all, this is the only shoe I wear. So think about it. If you're a woman and you can only wear one pair of shoes, then you can spend $200 on them because that's absolutely all I wear everywhere, okay? Um, I can't wear anything else. If I do, I, I regret it. But I want y'all to look at this. They're silver. And I really should have made the tongue black. And then the rest of this silver, because it's just a little much when you look at, at it from the front. They have the USA tag. Used to, you could have your name put on the back, but they're not doing that anymore. But anyway, they'll let you change every color to every part of the shoe. And that's important to me because so many of the running shoes and stuff they want you to buy are just the craziest looking colors. But now look what I did. But I still like them. They're really flashy. And I put them on with my blue jeans. And I said, "Woo!" Now that's a flashy shoe. Y'all, I got, I got um, another pair coming that's brown. And got or like a burnt orange and brown for the winter too. So I usually wear these a good six months before I wear them out. Because I do wear them continuously. Um, so I got me this pair, and I got me the brown and the burnt orange, and so uh, just thought I'd show y'all these crazy shoes. So if you see a woman out in public, and she's walking around with these crazy shoes, it's Tammy with Collard Valley Cooks. <laughs> but anyway, I'm telling you, since I got them and put them on my feet, my feet hadn't been hurting. I love them. Love them. I still have to put the inserts in them, though, from... Uh, Walmart, you know, the kiosk, uh, ones that are $50 at the kiosk. So these shoes on my feet are $250 with that in there. And you're probably thinking, that's just ridiculous that you would spend that on a shoe. It's not when it keeps me walking. Y'all, if I did not have these, I could not do this show. If I did not have these, I could not hardly get up and go. These have changed my life, Okay. So, they're worth every penny to me. Um, and I'm sure if I turned them in on uh, my program thing, the insurance would probably pay for them. But I don't. They are considered a shoe, you know, like you can turn in on your insurance. If you are interested in them. Um, I don't know what's in this box. I think I'll open it since y'all are on here. I got quite a few Christmas cards. Thank you if you sent me one. Let's see if we can get in this and see what's in here tonight. But May went to school yesterday and she she got her hair cut and enjoyed uh, So she sent me a picture of that. So I'll post a picture of her haircut. What is this? Oh, this is my laptop desk. And um, she... Um, had our first set of classes today, and Chris was coming through Macon on his way home, and he stopped, and he took her to Bass Pro Shops, and he got her a pocket knife. She wanted, because they can't have a knife, a real knife, but they can have a pocket knife. So he got her a pocket knife and a boggin for her head. I call them boggins. A lot of people call them toboggins. But um, that's what she got today. So they got to spend some time together today. This is my laptop desk. Um, this is what I'll put my laptop on, and these are fans, and they're not. These are not real expensive, and it goes up and down in the back, and it'll keep my computer from getting hot, and it'll make it live longer. It really does make a huge difference. So um, I got a new laptop. 
I'm going to give Chris the one I was using because his broke. And he was using an ancient one that still had Windows 7 on it. So I, um, when I got my new laptop, it's light as a feather. It's like two and a half pounds. It's an LG. And I love it. But it gets hot already on the bottom really quick. So I ordered this. So this will be nice. I was going to take it out and look. So it's got this so that I can, you know, like, put it up. It'll be nice. It's got that weird electronic new smell. Cool beans. I'll enjoy it. Um, so I've been reading in the Word of God about the tabernacle. And um, how God told them to build the tabernacle. And so, um, I'm not going to go into full-fledged Bible study with y'all tonight, just because we haven't been together in a while. And, um, but I do want to tell you this. Um, on January the 1st, and if y'all haven't done this yet, yes. If y'all haven't done it yet. I would encourage you to do it. But I took more time and I should have be, I should do it every day. There's no excuse except the fact that we just don't take the time out. But I took extra time out and prayed a lot on January the 1st for um, my viewers and for the show and for my family and for my church and just everything. And so... Um, it was a good day. I had a really good New Year's Day. And um, I hope that you guys did too. Chris was gone. He just came back today. He left on New Year's Eve. And he came back today. And I still haven't even sat and talked with him. I told him, I said, I'm going to go in there and talk to my girls. Then I'm going to come in here and sit with you. And he said, okay. But um, I'm sure he's tired of driving. He probably needs a minute. Um but yes, I did spend a lot of time in prayer on the 1st, and I spent a lot of time in my Word of God with Chris being gone, which is nice, you know. And I know that sounds crazy, but y'all, uh, when you got kids running in and out all day long, my husband wants to keep me up hour really late, and then he likes to sleep late. I'm a morning person. I typically would go to bed early and get up really early in the morning, but since he's retired, I'm not doing that anymore. Um, but let's talk just a little bit about this tabernacle. Um, I'm just going to touch. But I'm not even going to read it. I'm just going to uh, give you some highlights on it. Okay? Um, God is preparing them to uh, build the tabernacle. The thing that I think is really cool is that God tells them... He tells Moses that he is giving these gifts to these people so that they can build and be artistic to do this tabernacle. He plainly says that he's doing it and giving it to them. So the people that are really crafty with their uh, gold and their uh, sewing. They had to sew cherubims into the into the curtains that went on the tabernacle. They had to um, they had to do all kinds of intricate details. Okay, and I was thinking when he was explaining the tabernacle, how in the world did these people just know what to do? How would you just find somebody that could that could um, put these cherubims on? you know, in this cloth. But he tells them, um, and I would have to, you know, look for it again, but I was listening to it last night, but he tells them plainly that he gives them, he's going to prepare these people to be able to do this. And so um, the tabernacle had a, um, a lar it, it wasn't very big. It was only about 25 by 30. You know, when you think about it, you think a tabernacle is going to be really big. It's smaller than your house. It's much smaller than your home. It's like one side of my home. And that's it. And then the, and then the Ark of the Covenant was a square that was about four by four. Four foot by four foot. 
just a couple foot tall and it was gold overlaid on the outside and gold on the inside and then they put the tablets of the um um for heaven's sakes of the ten commandments and they also put I want to say that's where they may have placed some manna and I'd have to go back and look there's one other thing but anyway, it was the dwelling place for God. He actually lived inside that tabernacle. I mean, and he lived inside that box, or he was present there. He didn't live there, but he was present there. And so the priest could only go in there once a year, okay? And it was separated, that part of the tabernacle was separated by a veil. And then in the front part, they had a, uh, a table for the showbread, which was uh, like a sacrifice, like a, a gift, an offering. They had a um, menorah-type candle there, and they had, see, it's hard for me to remember everything just off the top of my head. This book, what I love about this book is it draws everything for you. This last one that I bought, um, let me just flip over here real quick. Okay, the table for the bread of presents, the golden lampstand, and the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, in the Ark of the Covenant, it was here from between the cherubims that God spoke to Moses and repre uh, the representative of the people of Israel. Ancient um, iconography often depicts the cherubim as having a lion-like body with wings and a human face. So these cherubims were built on top of this box. And I'm going to show you a picture. There they are. And then you had the showbread table. And look how ornate it is. And then you had the candlestick. And then when I flip my page, you can actually see Oh, they had an altar of incense. That's what I was missing. So they had an altar of incense. So this was the tabernacle. This is the back room where the box is kept, which is the uh, Ark of the Covenant. And then there you have the altar of incense. You have the candle. And then you have the showbread table. But look, it's not really that big. But this is separated from that by this curtain. And you can see uh, the inscription how they inscribed these cherubims in that curtain and it wasn't like a thin curtain like we have it was a real heavy and then it was covered in like five curtains on the outside um da -da 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 -da. i was trying to find where the art let me see if it says what is in it it was a wooden chest overlaid with pure gold it contained the two stone tablets of the testimony, the Ten Commandments. Oh, and it did contain the manna, and it, it also contained the staff that budded when Aaron threw it down. Okay? Um, that's what it had in it. All right? But anyway, it's real interesting reading. It's even better when you've got illustrations because... Um, I will have to say that I've never thought of it in this small of a perspective until I uh, looked at it in this study Bible. I always thought it was a big, big area, but it is really, really little. Really little. And then they did an altar, of course, on the outside where they do their sacrifices. And it wasn't real big either. And so we will uh, pick that up. I guess tomorrow, Lord willing, but there is the actual court of the tabernacle. So you can see where the altar is out there where they do their sacrifices, and then you can see the tabernacle in the back, and then there was fencing, and God told them exactly how to build this thing. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool.
Um, I want y'all to hear. But the rest of that, before we get to this, mostly, and so I haven't went through all of it with you guys, is um, mostly laws. I mean, just, you know, God laid down the law and he just gave them all these laws and all these things that they had to follow. And so, um, I would like to read that one little thing to y'all. The Lord says to Moses, Amen. I'm just going to read this one part, okay? And the Lord said to Moses, Speak to me, uh, speak to the people of Israel that they take for me a contribution. From every man whose heart moves him, you shall receive the contribution. For me. And this is the contribution that you shall receive from them gold, silver, and bronze, blue and purple and scarlet yarns, and fine twined linen goat's hair, tanned ram's skins, goat skins, acacia wood, oil for the lamps, spices for anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense, onyx stones, stones for setting the ephod, 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 I always say it wrong, Ephod, for the breastpiece, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell within their midst. Um, exactly as I show you concerning the pattern of the tabernacle and all of its furniture, so shall you make it. Um, and then he starts to tell them about how to make it. But before this happened, God got really mad at the people because y'all remember when Moses was up, um, on the mountain, and he came down, Aaron had made this gold, he had thrown all this gold into the fire, and when he got it out, it looked like a calf, and they were all worshiping it, and dancing, and having a good time, and it made Moses so mad, and it made God mad, and God wanted to kill him, and Moses begged him not to, um, So I wanted I wanted to tell you just because I I found it very interesting. I need to start underlining stuff in my Bible, I guess. Oh well, I guess I'll find it tonight. Tag it and then read it to y'all tomorrow. Because now I can't find it. But I listened to it twice on my Audible Bible. But anyway, I thought it was very interesting how he told them how he was going to prepare these people to do these things for the tabernacle. Um, it just goes to show that if we're talented, God gives us the talent. Whether or not we use it for his glory is up to us. But I'm sure that lots of times he does give people talents uh, to serve him, you know, and uh, to use it for his glory. And I'm sure that sometimes he blesses us with talents and, and we don't use them uh, to the extent that we could, you know, for the new year of 2000. I mean, yeah, 2020. I think we should all uh, make a pact to pray for each other. And we can just, I mean, it's hard to call out each other by name, especially when we're a large group. But let's, God knows who we are. And um, so let's always remember to pray for each other. Um, remember that if you don't catch me live, it doesn't mean you can't listen. Uh, because I know I'm terrible and I don't give you all a schedule. But that's how I like to keep it. Because I have so much going on otherwise um, that it's just better for me that way and that way I don't stress out. And if I don't stress out, then I'm more loving, I'm more caring, um, and I'm more in tune with God than if I feel like I have to do something on a certain day at a certain time. Okay? Um, and I know some people may not think that's very faithful, but that's just how I am. So, um, you got to have patience with me. Okay? So, if you don't have patience, maybe you should pray for some patience. 
But we need to um, pray for each other. Um, we need to pray for our country. We need to pray for these kids out there that are, um, you know, starting college and going to a new place and they're on their own and they have the freedom that the world extends to them and pray that they make good decisions. Um, I'm sure you have children or grandchildren or nieces or nephews or someone in your family that, that is in that situation. Let's remember to pray for um, the pastors in the United States um, and just pray for Christians in general that we would all love each other, encourage each other, and not be jealous of one another and not have strife against each other. Just because we don't believe every certain thing that someone else believes um, is not a reason to, to not get along with people. Now, I will say my thing is this. As long as you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and as long as you believe that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by him, me and you'll get along just fine. But I can't deny my Jesus. And those who do deny Jesus Christ, that is really the only sin that can put you in hell. Okay? Murder is not going to put you in hell. And um, adultery is not going to put you in hell. There's absolutely no sin that God cannot forgive if you're sincere in your heart except for the sin of rejecting Jesus Christ. Okay? So, that hits one of those points where when you're growing up and Granny always said or Mom always said, Oh, they killed herself. They're going to hell. That is not true. Nothing sends you to hell except that you deny Jesus Christ. Okay? It's not in the Bible anywhere. You can't find it. And if you can, you send it to me because it's not in there. That is the only sin that is, um, you know, it's the biggie. It's the biggie. And everybody's like, um, all sin is the same. And a sin is a sin. And sin is the same. Jesus died for all sin. Every single sin. But sins do have different judgments. Um, I hate to say, but they do. And if you study your Bible, you'll figure it out. And it doesn't make any of us a better person than somebody else because none of us are good. No, not one. None of us deserve what Jesus Christ did for us. None of us. It was his love and grace and mercy that showed us how much he loved us by sending his only son to die on that cross. And that, that alone is what we have to believe. He doesn't ask us to understand it. He asks us to believe it. So just because you can't, you don't know everything in the Bible and just because you're not smart or you, it, it's hard for you to understand, he doesn't ask you. To understand he says believe so as long as the Holy Spirit can come to you and nudge you and let you see that you need a Savior then that's all it takes it's pretty simple that's why a little child can do it okay it's been so good what about the sin of harming a child absolutely not there is not one sin except the rejecting of Jesus Christ that sends you to hell. Absolutely not. I'm sorry, but that is the only sin that will send you to hell. Now, does that mean that murderers and adulterers and child molestators, molestation people are in heaven? They are if they've accepted Jesus Christ and they've asked forgiveness of their sin. They sure are. But if they live the life of that and they never accept Jesus Christ, they're sure they're going to go to hell. 
But it's not just that sin that sent them to hell. It's all sin that sends us to hell. So you'll be right there with them. If, you, if you've never done one thing in your life wrong, if you think you have followed all the commandments and never missed one, and you never believed in Jesus Christ, you would be right there with the rest of the sinners in hell because sin is sin and it's Jesus Christ that died for all of it, okay? So you just remember that. That is the only sin that's going to send you there. Um, it's his blood that redeems us and pays for that. So if somebody don't believe in it, and they don't believe he died for them, and they don't believe that that blood was shed as that ultimate sacrifice when he said, this is finished. Y'all, that tabernacle we're talking about today, it was separated because it's where God dwelt by, a t by that screen. And when Jesus Christ died on that cross, that veil was torn in half and it opened. Nothing did that but God. And it was a way to show us that that ultimate sacrifice where they used to have to sacrifice outside the tabernacle to be able to get in there once a year to get close to God, he opened it. He got rid of that veil, y'all. And he made a way for all of us to be with him forever. It is a beautiful, beautiful picture of love and grace. And it's believing that gets us there. So, um, I'm just glad you're with us tonight. I'm glad that you're listening. I'm glad that you love me enough that you want to hear what I have to say. And that you love God enough that you would stay on to, to hear about his word as well. Um, I'm thankful that you guys were patient with me and list, you know, and waited on me because I do love you, but everybody does need a break. I take a couple of breaks a year. I normally take a break in the summer and I take a break around the first of the year because my kids are home, you know, and I hope y'all had a good time with family and, um, and you're ready to get down to business. Okay. So make sure if, if you can't do anything else in 2020, let's read our Bibles. And let's love our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay? He's with us all the time. We can't, we're never by ourselves. We're never alone. I remember when me and Chris first got married and um, I had the babies and he was a football coach. So there's plenty of times he was gone. And if I got scared, sometimes I'd get spooked and I'd get scared. And I would tell myself, I would pray, I would read my Bible, and I would say, God, make sure that the Holy Spirit is the only spirit in this house. And please guard me. And then I would just be calm, and I would be okay. And he can do that, y'all. If he chooses, he will guard us. Um, but it doesn't hurt to ask him every once in a while, so he knows we need him. Uh, so he knows we, we want him, and we need him. Um, so let's say our prayers tonight, and yes, hallelujah, Stacy, you are right, hallelujah, hallelujah goes right there, I mean it. I mean, when you think about that, when you read the, this tabernacle story, and you read how specific God was on how they built that, how specific he was on who could enter, how they had to be dressed, how they had to sacrifice, how... It was so hard to get to him. And then you read where Jesus Christ died and that veil was torn. It will give you cold chills to think he loved us that much. It's finished. All that's done. All that's over. We live in the best time that we could have ever lived on this earth. And that is the age of grace. Um, so let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the age of grace, and we thank you for your Son, and we thank you for that veil that tore, and we thank you that you have provided a way for us 
to go straight to you through Jesus Christ. We know that we do not have to go through anyone else. We don't have to get somebody else to pray. Or we don't have to um, do any of that, Lord, that you love us just as much as you love the Pope. You love us just as much as you love the preacher. You love each and every one of your children, and we thank you for that. We thank you for the way that you provided um, for us to be able to talk to you, for us to be able to thank you, love you, beg you, whatever it is we need to do. We are so grateful that you are there for us. We thank you for this new year in 2020. We pray that you would put a hedge over each and every one of us that are um, Christians and love you and believe that your son um, was put here by you, Lord, and died for our sin. Um, may you be with each and every one of us and our children and our family and our friends and just all of us, Lord. Help us to be good Christians. Help us to be a shining light. Help us to be the kind of person that somebody wants to be around and the kind of person that somebody can see Jesus through. Um, if we don't do anything this year, may we think about you when we get up and ask you, Lord, please, Lord, may I be a blessing to somebody today. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And I know one thing, GoDaddy was a blessing to me this week. If it weren't for GoDaddy, I'd still be in a, I shouldn't say that, but it, I really was in a bad mood. I had so much over on my plate, I just was overwhelmed. And I will have to say, I am so thankful for that program. Isn't it crazy how just things like that can make the world a difference? I mean, I literally sat on the couch for days, working and working and working, and brain dead and brain dead. Then I found that program, and I jumped up with thrill and chill and got up and cleaned the house, and it was like I come back to life. It was just such a blessing. Um, Elizabeth Miller says, In Matthew, unforgivable sins are mentioned. Blaspheming, rejecting, harming a child. Elizabeth Miller, that is incorrect. I am very sorry, dear. But you are taking the scripture out of context. Okay? Now, in the book of Matthew... God, of course, speaks to all of us, but is written mostly for the Jews, okay? When he mentions these sins, he's letting us know that they are sin. And when you're a Christian, you should be able to not do these types of things because you have the Holy Spirit living in you. But there are people out there that are saved, and they make mistakes, and they, they are put in situations um, that they do things that they wouldn't normally have done. Each and every one of us are guilty because we live in our flesh and because we have a fleshly nature. Now, when we're saved, that nature um, can be conquered, but it can only be conquered through the Holy Spirit and reading our Bibles and being close to God. So, never think... Elizabeth, that, or anybody else that's on here, that you have arrived, that um, these people that do these things are beneath you, or um, I'm trying to say to God, all of us are sinners. The only thing that saves us is Jesus' blood. When God looks down on you, and if it were up to him, there's no way we could get close to him. The only way we can get close to him is because of that blood sacrifice. I mean, he required a blood sacrifice in the Old Testament, and in the New Testament, it's Jesus is the sacrifice. Okay? So, if he looks at you, if he looks at me, if he looks at the Pope, if he looked at the preacher... He still sees us as people. If we're saved, he sees the blood of Jesus Christ. He don't see Tammy Nichols. He sees the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ sees Tammy Nichols. 
Jesus Christ knows who I am, but God sees the blood. That's what gets us into heaven, okay? Nothing we say, nothing we can do, nothing that we are, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ, okay? So remember that. There's plenty of men in prison that will be in heaven, and there's plenty of men in prison that will be in hell. There's plenty of men and women in the pews of church that will be in hell just as they will in heaven. Because nobody knows our hearts but God. Okay? Um, but I do think people do get put in situations. Things happen to people even after they're saved. They get away from God and um, Sin creeps in, and it just gets bigger and bigger, and they can do some things, but if they if they truly believed in Jesus Christ, they'll make it to heaven. Now, they won't have an abundant life here, and when they're judged, because once we're in heaven, there is a judgment day, and it's not about our sin, because Jesus paid for the sin. It's about what did we do for God while we were here. So that's what we need to worry about, girls. And guys, not whether or not these people are going to hell. I mean, of course we want them to go to heaven. But are we, when we go through the judgment, is Jesus going to be proud of us? Um, is he going to um, look down and say, well done, my good and faithful servant? Um, are we being a good Christian? Are we being a good example? Are we working for him? Are we giving? Are we uh, helping people? Um, do we smile at people? Do we spread the gospel? Or do we sit complacent on a church pew or complacent in our home? And I'm going to tell you, the world today, and I grew up with people who went to church, and hardly nobody would sit around and just talk about Christ Hardly nobody would sit around and go, well, you know what? This is how I got saved. Are you really saved? They feel like if, if your family is offended because you ask them if they're saved or you say, I would like to hear about your salvation story, if it offends them, then they're probably not saved because why would it offend anybody to talk about their salvation? And there's so many complacent Christians today they don't even know if their own families are saved, much less if the neighbor's saved or the their coworker saved. So um, that's what we need to be thinking about, because that's what we're going to be judged on. Okay, not our sin. Jesus paid for our sin. I'm telling you, the only sin that's going to send anybody to hell is rejecting Him. But um, let's see what we can do. For him while we're here, right? I hope y'all have a blessed night. I preached enough. Um, my brother does preach, and um, he's trying to get it set up so that he can preach. But you know, he preaches live. I mean, his daughter, his his wife videos him, and then she puts it on the computer, and it's pretty good. But you know, they don't have real good equipment or anything like that. But if you're interested, I'm just going to share that to the page. Um, so that you can kind of uh, keep up with him if you'd like to. If you want to listen, if you're homebound and um, Stacy says, We do not have a sin nature in Christ. That's a poor translation. We are made new in Christ and we still live in our flesh, but our nature is not sin anymore. It is righteousness. As you said, I... As you said, it's finished and God has given us power over our sin and flesh. If we surrender, die to self, and let Christ live his life through us, that is true. But how many people really do that after they're saved? Not a whole lot. Um, hardly, hardly anybody really gets up and reads their Bible every day and really is in tune with the Holy Spirit. Um, I just don't believe that because I believe that if they were, that way more people would be on fire for God and trying to make sure people were saved 
they would talk about him a lot more. It wouldn't be something that people um, are scared to say. Um, so, it's easy to read that and want to believe that we're good in Christ. But, and we are. The only thing good that's living in us is Christ. But for the most part, we're bad. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. If I stay out of my Bible a few days, I get ill, I get mean, I get fussy. I might say a few curse words if I ain't been in it a couple of months. That's just how I am. Does that mean I'm not saved? Absolutely not. That means I'm not surrendering to Christ every day. And there's so many people that don't. Way more that don't than do. So y'all just remember that. Uh, never get to the point where you think you've arrived because you haven't. Uh, because even if you have, next week you may not be there. So we need him. That's why we need him. We need him every day. Every minute of every day. And it's only him that gives us the joy and the peace and the love and the abundant life that we can have here on this earth. We can be saved and live in the wilderness like all those people did that that Moses got out of Exodus. I mean, in Exodus that Moses brought out of the Egypt, he brought them out of Egypt, just like God will bring you out of bondage and save you. But it's up to it was up to those people whether or not they lived the abundant life and got to Canaan. They never got there. So it's up to us. Even after we're saved, whether or not we get out of that wilderness and we live in Canaan, the abundant life. So remember that too. Those people were redeemed and they were saved. Not the kind of sal salvation we have, but as far as God was concerned, he pulled them out of bondage. And that's what happens to us when we're saved. But we have to reciprocate, study the word, love God. Be in the right spirit and in order to have an abundant life and get out of that wilderness. Don't be a Christian living in the wilderness forever. Does it mean you'll go to heaven? Absolutely. But boy, do you miss out on the things that God's going to do for us once we get to heaven. We're all not going to be equal up there. Everybody thinks we're all equal and we're not. I mean, he's going to judge us. And we're going to have jobs and things to do. So... Remember that, too. Um, let's see. I guess I preached enough. I keep saying that. But y'all just remember what I said. Um, if I've confu confused you, then you can send me something. And just remember that you never pull a scripture out of the Bible unless you look at the history of it. Unless you read, you know, you just can't pull a scripture. Even if the Holy Spirit's trying to guide you or whatever. You still have to study the Bible. God says, study the Bible and show yourself approved. Okay? Uh, and he, he also says, rightly divide the, the word of God. So, um, we are to do that. Right? Um, Y'all have a good, good day. Let's remember to pray for each other and love each other and encourage each other. Don't ever, ever, Believe something someone tells you, even me. You have to believe the Word of God, and you have to study it, okay? Um, my study Bible is, right now, this one is an English Standard Version. Yes, it's not the KJV, but I have a KJV right next to me as well. So either one works. I like this one because it has the illustrations and stuff. The ESV is a wonderful translation. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. There, the, I, I personally don't like the NIV. Sorry if you do. Um, but there's a lot of words and stuff that they pull out of there that I think needs to, to be there. Um, but if I were going to recommend a word for you to first time read... Um, it would be the KJV. I love the KJV. I was raised on it. I know, I, I know the KJV. Um, it's on a very low grade level. It is not hard to understand like everybody thinks it is. Um, and a study Bible is wonderful. If you want it studied already and it in the KJV, then you buy an amplified version, which is nothing more than the KJV expanded. Okay. It's a wonderful, wonderful 
uh, version. So if if I were going to tell you to to buy a Bible, um, if if you really want one for the new year, and you're really hungering for God, I would ask you to buy the Amplified version, which is the KJV expanded. Okay, that is um, what I would ask you to do. And then once you graduate from that one, read that one first from front to back. Once you graduate from the KJV Amplified, make sure it's Amplified because it'll be easier for you to understand it. It just will. Um, and it's still the KJV. Read it first from front to back. And then after you graduate from that one, then, then hop over to the ESV. Okay? That's what I would recommend. Y'all have a great day. Go buy you a really nice Amplified Bible. You can get them at Ollie's, uh, Ollie's Outlet if you have one. Uh, their Bibles are like half the price that they are in a bookstore. Uh, also, like there's some there's some Bible um, there's some stores online too. They're really good. Um, they're always cheaper if you get a hardback. You notice both of these are hardback because they're cheaper. Um, way way cheaper. Okay, and so they're like uh, at least twenty dollars cheaper than the other one. So, um, y'all have a blessed night. I'm going to go see my husband. I haven't seen him since the 31st. Love y'all. Bye.